Amen. 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 As part of the women's convention, uh, I want to start today, all the three services, I'm going to teach you and give you some mysteries about women and our mothers. Amen. Amen. And the blessing that everybody receives connected to their mothers. So let's go to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. Chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. Um, um, verse of 1 coming. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman. When she became pregnant, she gave birth to a son. When she saw that the child was fine, tell somebody fine. Fine. Who saw that the child was fine? Who? Mother. Yeah, the mother. When she, when she saw, it's only your mother who can know how fine you are. She hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a, ba a basket and put a pitch and towel on it. That's cold towel and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put the child on the reeds across the river now, the bank of river now. Then his sister stood at a distance. Now a woman to have come in the sister. Stood at a distance to see what would happen to the guy. Now the, the guy is in the basket and the basket is on top of water. Then Pharaoh's daughter, another third woman, Pharaoh's daughter went to the Nile to bath and her attendants walking with her along the Then she too, she saw the basket among the roots and she sent the slave girl to go and get it because we've seen a basket, what is in there. When she opened it, she saw a baby crying and she felt sorry for the baby. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then her sister, so Moses' sister was standing somewhere and saw that he opened it. So the sister, be smart, said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get a woman to take care of the baby for you? And if you were here, you would definitely go and pick the, boy, girl, the boy's mother. And let's see. So she said, yes, go. And she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Let's go. I like how the story has been written, but we don't know the baby. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, now take this baby. Take care of the baby. Nurse the baby for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed the baby. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. And named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. So Pharaoh's, no, it's okay. So Pharaoh's daughter named Moses, calling him Moses. Hebrew word means Moshe, which simply means to draw out. And after many years, God used him to draw out the people of Israel from the land of Egypt. Oh, I can't feel somebody. Help me to give the title of my sermon to your neighbor on your left or on your right and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. Thank God for your mother. Thank God for your mother. Say, my neighbor. My neighbor. I don't know. I don't know. Whether your mom was good. Whether your mom was good. Or mom was bad. Or mom was bad. I don't know whether your mom was good. I don't know whether your mom was good. Or your mom was bad. Or your mom was bad. But thank God. But thank God. She didn't abort you. She didn't abort you. You may be seated. I want to pray this wonderful morning, using as a subject, I thank God for my mother because she didn't abort me. I thank God for my mother because she didn't abort me. There's a great scientist. I think that's the greatest scientist of all times. He was born in March 14th, 1879. And he died in April 18th. 1955. Through his inventions, the whole world has become a better place. And the things that he invented, as a matter of fact, we are using them right now. The first thing, one of the things he, invest, uh, he invented was the global positioning satellite. We call it GPS. Most of you by now, anytime you take Uber, something will be talking in the Uber. Turn left, turn right, turn back, turn. By his theory, we were able to get GPS. The second thing that he also invented was about photoelectrical. That how you can use lights, sunlight, to convert into electricity, like the solar panels. Number three, he helped 
nuclear physics, so atomic bomb, he also helped to invent it. Number four, he also helped to invent how people can go into space. The name of this scientist is called Albert Einstein. If you have a picture, I can check his picture. This is the man. He's a German man who later lived in America. Now, when this young man was born, he couldn't speak. When he was born, he couldn't hear. It took him around the age of six years because before he could hear, learn, and write. So one day, they took him to school. And after coming from school, he brought a note from the school. And he gave the note to the mother. Because he was a young guy, he couldn't read. So when he gave the note to the mother, around the age of, I think, eight years or nine years, the next day, the boy's mother didn't take him to school. This is a scientist. So as a matter of fact, it was something that the boy didn't understand. That The note they gave to me from school right now, my mom is not taking me to school. So the mother started teaching the boy in, in, in the house. Started teaching the boy until the guy grew up. The name of the mother is called Pauline Einstein. So after many years, when he grew up, and now he's able to speak, he has become great, and the mother died. And when the mother died, he went into the mother's closet. So he's taking his mother's things out, then he stumbled upon a letter that was given to him when he was young. So he, re he read the letter, and this is what the teacher wrote. The teacher said, woman, your son is dumb. Your son is thick in the head. Your son is one of the difficult children over here. So I can't teach your son again. So take your son and teach your son by yourself. But the time he was young and the mother read that letter unto him. The mother didn't write that. The, the mother told him. The teacher says in the whole class, you are so best. So you know too much things, you don't go to school anymore. So when he grew up and he said, oh, it was not because the teacher said I was too intelligent. But the teacher said I was nobody. But my mother saw something inside of me. There is something about mothers that our mother sees something in us. Sometimes we have no idea. Our mothers can see 50 years from today without you not knowing. When, the, when somebody comes around your life behaving as a friend, your mother is the person, the first one to know whether this person will help you or not. Mm, ah, do I have a witness over here? We have great mothers. And when we check out the Bible, you see women. Women that God used greatly. We have some good women. And in as much as I'm speaking about good women, we also have bad women. Don't get it wrong. Some of the good women we see in the Bible was a woman by the name of Bathsheba. Who gave birth to Solomon? Solomon became a great king. Another good woman we see is a woman by the name of Hannah, who gave birth to the greatest prophet in Israel by the name of Samuel. She named Samuel. Another woman is called Esther. When they were about to kill the whole nation, one woman stood up and said, No way. Another woman by the name of Deborah, who stood for the nation and said, The devil can never wear. We have a grandmother and a mother who gave to a young man. He is called Timothy. The name of the grandmother is called Lois. And the mother is called Eunice. They were so powerful. Yes, still, there are some wrong mothers who are very dangerous in the Bible who to tormented the life of their children. One of them is called Jabez's mother. I don't know her name. The Bible says she called the name of the son Jabez, which means pain, because I gave birth to you in pain. Sometimes, out of the pains of our mothers, we get problems. But if you are here and your mother has put a wrong name on you, Jesus. behind the scenes or before you today, by the hand of God, let there be a switch in the name of Jesus. Amen. We see another woman in the Bible who caused a big confusion in the family. She divided her own two sons. The name of the woman is called Rebecca, the mother of Jacob and Esau. We have another wicked woman in the Bible. She killed young boys who were supposed to become the kings in the family. The name of the woman is called Atalia. Until somebody hit one of the children. So we have good women, but we have some dangerous women. We have uh, uh, some bad women who one day, the Bible said, they sat down together and one woman said, let's bring my child and let's kill my child and eat my child. Then after we finish eating my child, we shall eat yours. How can women, mothers, come together and say, let's eat our children? Physically, some women are eating their children. Spiritually, some women are eating their children. But I thank God that you and I, the hand of God, oh, I come through somebody. 
Amen. And in the course of this particular week, in the course of the ministration, there are so many things I will teach you connected to women. Now, also, I will declare over your life that no mother here, no woman here, no woman here. Let me even pause here before I continue. I, I keep on talking about women. I, talk, I keep on talking about mothers. You know that there's something good about this church, that when you walk in here, you begin to have babies. So I want to pause here before I start everything at all. If you are here looking, looking for the fruit of the womb, the altar that has given children to people, I declare, by the time this conference is over, the Lord will open your womb. Amen. Now, not only you, but anybody connected to you, wherever they are, if they are looking for baby, I declare, let God grant it unto them in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now listen to me. God has blessed the church so very much that sometimes people walk to me and say, Prophet, I want to have a girl. I say, Abba, I see that you have a prophet. I have boys, but I want you to pray to get a girl because they think that it's very easy for people to get. Receive that grace from this house. I receive it. Now I will, I will, I will teach you on how no mother here, I declare right now, no mother here, no woman here, no mother here will ever bury their child. Amen. Oh, I can feel somebody. I speak in the name of Jesus that no mother here, no woman here will bury your child. Amen. As a matter of fact, there are some women in the Bible that bury their children. We have a woman by the name of Eve. Adam's wife had two sons. She buried one of them. Cain killed Abel. She buried her son. You will not bury your children. Amen. Oh, those who are touching the altar are spiritual. Those who are coming on the altar with their sacrifices are spiritual. You will not bury your children. Amen. Now, 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 there is a woman who also buried one of the children. Her name was called Bathsheba. Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, she buried one of the children. The first child that was born was dead before Solomon was born. I declare you not bury your child. Amen. Oh, I can't feel you. I can't feel you. I can't feel you. Amen. Now, when we read the Bible, the Bible speaks about Jairus' daughter who, who, who became sick and died. Jairus' daughter. And Jairus' daughter had... Ja Jarius also had a wife. So Jarius' wife buried the child until Jesus stepped in. I speak in Jesus' name. You don't be Jarius' wife. You don't bury your child. Amen. Oh, I can't feel somebody. Give me base. I can't feel somebody. Amen. Now, um, uh, uh, um, people might think I'm going so far. Don't forget this one. Jesus' mother Mary, she buried her son. Mary buried her son at the age of 33 years. I declare the pain Mary went through by burying her son Jesus. You will not, oh, I can't feel somebody. Can you elbow somebody by you and say, My neighbor? My neighbor. You will not bury anybody close to you. You will not bury anybody close to you. Amen. Can I continue? Yes. Now, now, there are some issues that come into contact with women. What, 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 what I'm giving to you right now, I've compressed about three months' sermon that I'm giving to you right now. So I'm giving you a lot of revelation, seriously. You know, um, there are some things that are connected to our mother that we are, if you are not careful, it happens to us. When you check a woman by the name of Rachel, she had a sister by the name of Leah. Jacob wanted to marry Leah, wanted to marry Rachel, and they give him Leah. So between Leah and Rachel, there was contention. Do you know? Because of the contention between Leah and Rachel, their children too went through. That's why when Joseph was born, the brothers were fighting Joseph. Because of the same contentions of the mothers, it happened to them. Whatever happened to your mother in the name of Jesus, Jesus. will never happen to your life. Amen. Somebody saw Jesus. Jesus. Now there are women that God also used to deliver a whole nation. One of them was called Esther. The other one was called Deborah. And the third one was a woman. I thank God that a woman God used to change the whole nation. She, one of them, was a prostitute. The name was called Rahab. Tell someone, say, my neighbor. My neighbor. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Because of my past. Because of my past. Amen. And now, and now, and now this prostitute that God used to change the whole nation, she became one of the great grandmothers of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. She married a man and through the man. Boaz came out, and now, when you're talking about Jesus' grandparents, their prostitute is part. If you are here and people use your past against you, tell them, I'm still with Jesus. Amen. Wow. Oh, I can't feel somebody, I'm still with Jesus. Now, the, the, the other thing, too, I will get time to really teach you in this particular week is this. No woman here. Hear me one more time. No woman here for the third time. No woman here 
will die in childbirth. Mm. Oh, I declare right now. I speak right now. Maybe you are here. You think you've already, you are already old. You don't need any baby again. But what I'm speaking right now is happening for your grandchildren. Mm. It's happening for your children. Mm. It's happening for people around your life. Mm. It's happening around everybody against you. Mm. I speak right now. Mm. No women here. My God, my God. Mm. As you touch the altar with your sacrifice, I declare in the name of Jesus. No woman here, yourself, yourself, your grandchildren, your nephews, your nieces, your, 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 your aunties, none of them will die in the midst of childbearing. Let the Spirit of God rise up and show up right now. None will perish. None will perish. None will perish. This week, in this woman's convention, none will perish. Now, um, Prophet Daniel, Prophet Daniel, why do you say so? Because in the Bible, some women died when they were giving birth. One of them was a woman that the son became a prime minister. But the woman was nowhere to be found. I'm talking about Rachel. Rachel gave birth to Joseph. Joseph became a prime minister. But when Rachel was giving birth to the second born, by the name of Benjamin, she died. She was not there to enjoy the firstborn son's blessings. I speak now. You, nobody around you would end up like Rachel. Amen. Okay, okay, okay. There's another woman too. She doesn't have a name, but she has a description. She is, um, you know, um, the high priest Eli, prophet Eli, Eli. She had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, the ones who were doing bad things in the church. When they died, one of them, the wife was in labor and the wife died. You not die in childbirth. Amen. Now, we have women in the Bible too who help to give out names unto children. But the issue is that some of the names are good and some of the names are bad. Some of them is Mary. Because it's the angel who went to Mary and said, when you give birth, call the name Jesus. So Mary helped to give the name Jesus. Thank God for Mary. May God use our mothers to put good names on us. Amen. We have Elizabeth. The angel said to the husband, the boy shall be called John. But the man became deaf and dumb. He couldn't speak. So they're about to call the boy another name. And the woman showed up and said, no, my husband told me that the angel said a different name. The mother helped to give a good name. But there's a woman who helped to give a bad name. That is Jabez's mother. He said, I'll give birth to you in pain. May you go through pain. I speak in the name of Jesus. In the wrong name on you, I reverse it by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Now, there's, there's another woman too. Uh, Rachel too, when she was dying, when she was dying in childbirth, she named the boy bad name called Bedoni. And Benoni means son of my pain. But the husband Jacob was too there and said, no, you are dying. Why do you want to put a bad name on my boy? So the husband changed the name from Benoni unto Benjamin. Benoni means son of my pain. Benjamin means son of my right hand. Right hand is authority. So the man changed from pain to power. That's why the first king of Israel came from the tribe of Benjamin. One name can change your destiny. And we have a woman who gave birth to one of the greatest prophets in Israel. Her name is called Hannah. The Bible says, and Hannah named the boy Samuel. Now the word Samuel means ask, A-S-K. I ask of El, I ask of the Lord. Because when she asked of the Lord, God gave her Samuel. So Samuel was an evidence to an answered prayer. I came to speak to everybody here. God will give you a Samuel. Amen. But for now, your my Samuel. Anything I've prayed, I'm praying about, I've not seen yet, that is about to happen for me. It is my Samuel. So your Samuel is your promotion, your good health, your elevation, your blessings. What God has said about your life, it is your Samuel. Say, God will give me my Samuel. God will give me my Samuel. Now I'll go into my test. And the Bible speaks to us about a woman. The name of this particular woman is called Jochebed. And the husband's name is called Amram. And they gave birth to a boy by the name of Moses. Jochebed simply means the glory of God. And Amram means a high man. An elevated man. And they gave birth to Moses. But the Bible says at this particular time, they are finding themselves in Egypt. I thank God for the prayer, Pastor Dennis led us, that sometimes where you are located plays a role in your life. Now Moses is about to be born. But before he was born, there was a law 
that the Hebrew women, they were giving birth to Hebrew boys. Boys. So the boys were growing powerful. The Pharaoh said, anytime somebody give birth to a boy, kill the boy. But when they give birth to a girl, leave the girl alone. Let me tell you something. Men are powerful. There's something about men. When one man changes, the whole community changes. When one man is blessed, other people are blessed. There is something strange about men. That's why the enemy is always blocking men. I pause here on every man. Jesus. I declare on every man. Jesus. Not only on every man, every man connected to you. Whatever is trying to stop any man Jesus. in power of worship, I speak by the blood of Jesus, Jesus. that nothing can block you. Jesus. Nothing will stop you. Jesus. Any agenda against any man, Jesus. any agenda against any male figure, let the Spirit of God reverse it now. Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So he says, he says, when is a boy, kill the boy. If it's a girl, leave the girl. And the order that was given was given to the midwives. So imagine you were a woman you are going to give birth. And the midwife has been given an order that when the baby comes, if it's a boy, kill the baby, what will you do? But the Bible says, the midwives that were called to do that job, they didn't do it. Oh, oh, oh. Pharaoh told the midwives, when they are giving birth, it's a boy. Kill the boy. But the Bible said the midwives were so good that when the babies were coming, the midwives didn't kill them. May God give you a good midwife. Amen. That when they have an assignment to stop you, because of the grace on you, their mind will change. Amen. If anybody designs something against you, because of you, their mind will change. There, there, there were two midwives. One of them was called Shepra, and the other one was called Pua. The Bible says, so the, the women still were giving birth. Then Pharaoh called the midwives. Hey! I gave you an assignment. Why are you not killing the babies? And the midwife did a holy lie. And they said, it's not our fault. The Hebrew women are so powerful that before they get to the labor world, their baby is already out. So we, don't, we can't even kill them. Then the Pharaoh being a wicked man still said, now, midwives, stop your job. Now let everybody in Egypt, the Egyptians do one thing. When you see that any Hebrew woman has given birth to a boy, take the boy and go and drop them into the river now. Kill them. The devil is so wicked. If he can't stop you here, he will try you dead. He used the midwives. It couldn't work. Now he says, now when you pick any baby, drop them in the water and let them die. But don't you know that there are some people, they are undiable. Mm. Wow. Ah, am I speaking to undiable people here? Yeah. Some people, it's my own word. Some people, you're undiable. Right. They tried you there, they couldn't. Right. They tried you here, they couldn't. They forced you with sickness. The hand of God came about your life. This morning, I speak over your life. They can't talk you. They can't can't stop you. Amen. Let the Spirit of God Jesus. arise on your behalf. Amen. So they can't touch me. They can't touch me. You may be seated. So the Bible says, so now the law has been given. And then the woman, whose name is called Jochebed, which means the glory of God, became pregnant. She had a baby. Hey! At that time, there was no CT scan. So you can't know whether it was a boy or a girl. When she gave birth, it was a boy. She Jesus, I said, my bar. When they see my baby, they will kill my baby. By being a woman, being a woman, being a woman, she took the baby and put the baby and protected the baby for three months. But for three months, she kept protecting the baby. But how long can you keep a baby after three months? Because in the night, they will be nye, nye. In the night, they will be crying. In the night, they will be this. So definitely, something has to show up. Which means when God gives you a miracle, you can't hide your miracle. Right. When God does 
has something for you. You can't hide it. The miracle will speak for itself. Can I speak to 500 people in the house that there is a miracle in your life? You are trying to hide it. You can't hide your testimony. I said the testimony coming your way. You cannot hide your testimony. By the count of three, may God remember your life. Lift up your right hand and shall preach Daniel. Preach Daniel. That's what I was born to you. You may be seated. So she couldn't stop it for 90 days. Can I pause here to declare in the next three months? I said in the next three months. I speak right now in the next three months. God is about to surprise somebody. I said in the next three months. There's going to be a switch in the turn around. In the next three months. Let something switch in the atmosphere. In the next three months. May God come through for your life. In the next three months. There are some people here who say, Prophet Daniel, three months is so far. Can you make it three weeks? I declare in the next three weeks. I call. Some people just say, Prophet Daniel, in the next three days. That's right. Most of you, maybe you don't know, you are in the testimony city. Whatever we say on this altar begins to happen. Yes. I declare in the next three months, in the next three weeks, in the next three days. Okay, pause. Hear me. I just heard some. The Lord said, Daniel, not three days anymore. In the next three hours. In the next three hours. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. In the next three hours, Jesus. there's going to be a step. In the next three hours, I see good news on the way. Let the angels of three, let the angels of three, let the angels of three, let them rise up on your behalf. Let them remember you by the grace of God. In the next three hours, let your phone ring with good news. You may be seated. You may be seated. It's a Sunday, so I want to comport myself. It's a Sunday. It's going to be great. So, um, she couldn't hide it. And the Bible says she put the baby in a basket. And she put the basket on top of the water. But, but everybody hear me. Everybody hear me. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Place your hand down. Lift up your right hand. Place your hand down. Let me tell you something small about the law of rotation. It says an object can only float. When the weight of the object is equal to the, what, the, the weight of the water displaced. So, when you have a basket and you put a stone in the basket, the stone is supposed to sink. The basket is supposed to sink. A stone and the weight of Moses, which one is stronger? Moses. So, the law of flotation and Archimedes principle that they work over there. Because God knew. That if the basket sinks, the boy will die. And if the boy dies, some people will die in Egypt. But God wanted to bring some people out of Egypt. And God needed one person to use them. There's somebody here, do you know the reason why you cannot die? It's because your family is depending on you. It's because your generation is depending on you. The reason why you cannot die. Listen, the reason why you cannot be broke is because you are supposed to give birth to some people, right. supposed to give some money to some people. Right. So there's no way you. Amen. Say, I can't fail, I can't fail, I can't fail. I, can't I fail. cannot fail. I cannot fail. No, you can't fail. That's right. You may be seated. You may be seated. And, and, and um, when, when, I, when, I was, when I was reading the Bible, God gave me a revelation that blew my mind. Look at Moses' mother. Moses' mother put Moses on top of the river, and he didn't sink. Uh, when I tell you what God told me to blow your mind, can I tell you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. The Lord said, Daniel, I made the mother to put the baby on the river because a year was coming that Moses would deliver the people through a sea. Wait, 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 wait. He survived the river because one day they will confront a Red Sea. 
So he knows how to survive rivers. Right. He knows how to survive waters. Right. The Lord says the reason why your next miracle is coming is because you survived the last time. Yeah. I speak in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Am I speaking to survivors over here? Yeah. Hey, those who are fighting you, they've got to be very careful. Right. They don't know what you have survived. Yeah. At the age of five years, you survived. At the age of 10 years, you survived. So what do they think they can fight you now? They can never fight you. They can never fight you. You are a survivor. Shout, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. The reason why Moses couldn't die in the rest was because he survived the river. That's right. Have you survived something in your life? Yes. I declare over your life. Okay, Brother Daniel, how did he survive water? It was through the mother. That's right. I don't know whether the mother knew he will meet Red Sea one day, but our mothers are prophetic. I said, our mothers are prophetic. They know something about our lives. Let every blessing on your mother come on you. Oh, wait, 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 listen to me. It's not all cares that are on your mother. Some blessings on your mother. Let all blessings on your mother come to you right now. Amen. And it's going to cast it from your mother right now. Amen. Okay, let me continue. Then um, put him in the water. Now hear me. The name of the water he put Moses on there is now. And it is the same now that Pharaoh said that when you pick somebody's child, kill the baby in the now. So the same now Moses was floating on top. Other children were dead in it. Wait, 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 wait. The same river he was on top. Other babies were dead on it. That's right. Can I declare to you? Jesus. What killed other people? Okay, I can't feel this side. Let me go to this side. I said, what killed other people is about to elevate you. Yeah. Okay, let me come back here again. I said, what killed other people Jesus. is about to elevate your destiny. Yeah. What killed other people? Jesus. Sit down. So Moses is on top and other children are dead. Right. Church, can I pause here to tell you one thing? You are here today because of the grace of God. Yes. Because Moses didn't do anything to around the protection. It was the grace of God. Let grace speak for somebody. Amen. For, for the second time, I declare, let grace speak for somebody. Amen. Now listen. So, he says, kill people, kill children. Kill children in the now. But whilst he was on there, and hear me, who gave the order? The one who gave the order is called Pharaoh. And now the same person who gave the order, the daughter is coming to bath. Um, so because Mo, if Moses wants to kill, if Pharaoh wants to kill Moses, definitely Pharaoh's daughter also has to kill Moses. But when Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses, the Bible says she saw it was a Hebrew child. So definitely what Pharaoh's daughter could have done was that, hey, Hebrew child. My father wants them to die. So let me rather kill them for my father. But the Bible says she felt sorry. Listen to me. God is about to hide you. Amen. I said the blood of Jesus is about to hide you. Listen, the people you thought were going to do you bad, they are going to do you good. Amen. Ah, we think all people are bad. Not all people are bad. Even the ones who we think will do us bad, God will cause them to do us the one who shall the loudest good. They're about to do you good. Shall good. Now, 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 the enemy's daughter picks the boy and says, I will take care of the boy. Then, all of a sudden, another woman showed up. That is Moses' sister. And came to the lady, the princess. He says, I heard you say that the boy looks like a Hebrew. I can get you a nurse. I can get you somebody to take care of the baby. And listen, if the girl is going to take somebody, 
Will she go and take an outsider? She will take Moses' mother. Then she brought Moses' mother. When Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses' mother, she said, take care of this boy for me and take this money. I want to pay you to take care of the child. Ah, how can somebody pay you to take care of your own? Those who are clapping, you are spiritual. When God wants to surprise you, he will let your enemies pay you something good. That's right. Those who are shouting something. Yes. Paid money with the money and said, take care of the baby for me. And then when the baby grows, I will come back. Now I have five minutes to finish. This is why I came here. In the early part of a child's life, because Moses has now become a Pharaoh's daughter's son, Moses was being trained to become a Pharaoh. Now, when, because Moses, um, Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, she, was, she didn't have a baby. So Moses is supposed to be trained to become a Pharaoh. And a, a Pharaoh is a deity, a, a big god for the Egyptians. And when you are Pharaoh, they train you in medicine. They train you in astrology. They train you in law. And they train you in occult. Everything powerful, they train you. Because one day, you shall become the Pharaoh. And they will teach you about the mythology of the Egyptians. In other words, the idols of Egypt. How the sun, how the moon, how the frogs, all of them work for people. But Moses is a Hebrew guy who only knows about the name of God. So, if Moses had been trained first by Pharaoh's daughter, what would have been instilled in Moses was the mythology of the Egyptians. So, when Moses' mother picked Moses and was teaching him at the age of one, two, three years, she was telling the boy, there is a God that made the heavens and the earth. His name is the El Shaddai. Right. His name is the I am that I am. Right. He says, my sons, he says, my son, you are called Moses. Don't worry at all. I know very soon I will give you to the other people. But I put in you the grace of power. I put in you something to protect you. Right. So although you go to Pharaoh's house, their power cannot fight you. Yes. And the day is coming. I know God will use you to deliver my people. The prayers of a mother are powerful. Yes. The declarations of a mother yes. are powerful. Yes. Prayers of a woman Jesus. are powerful. So although Moses grew up in the palace, because of what the mother placed inside of him, he couldn't run away from it. Okay. Today I speak by fire. Jesus. Every blessing on you oh from your mother. Jesus. Every favor on you Jesus. from your mother. Oh Today I move to the umbilical court. Oh of your mother, Jesus. all the give and take, whatever was given to you Jesus. from your mother, yes, Lord. that was good, that was wonderful, that was powerful. I activate, Amen. 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 but now I move to your mother, Jesus. anything from your mother My God. that was bad generational problems Jesus. the sufferings Jesus. the agony the frustrations what for your mother today i declare it cannot fight you what for your mother in the case in the crisis in the crisis from your mother i speak by fire jesus it will never Run after you. Amen. Let God Jesus. deliver your life. Amen. Let God Jesus. stop it now. Amen. I speak Jesus. the grace of God. Yes, Let heaven speak on your behalf. Amen. Lift up your voice and shout power. Power. My God. I'm done. I'm done. Be on your feet. I'm done. I'm done. I've told you this Sunday. It's just a pre-conference, so what is going to happen is what I'm teaching you. I'm just giving you part one. 
or maybe just one percent of it. I'm down beyond your faith. Now, uh, hear me. So, at that few three years, four years, is when the woman put something in Moses. So, what time? Mean, how did Moses know that he was a Hebrew boy? One day he was passing by, and the Hebrew boy and the Jewish boy were fighting. He went to kill the Jewish boy and protected the Hebrew boy. How did he know? Because he was in the palace. But the mother put something in him and said, Oh, hear you, O Israel. The Lord is your God. That was the empowerment the mother put in him. So although he grew up in the palace of Pharaoh, he was not an Egyptian. Hey, listen to me. So long as you live in a garage, doesn't make you a car. Oh, 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 oh. I said, when you sleep, listen, when you sleep in an oven, it doesn't make you a bread. So you can grow up in the palace of Pharaoh. You are still an, uh, uh, an Israelite because there is something about you. Today, yes. listen to me. And every day, mothers are bad. Mothers are bad. Who told you? Mothers are good. Women are good. Women are good. Just that some, some of them have opened themselves for the devil to use them. But today, two, two prayers. In the wrong thing from a woman against you. Jesus. And hear me, all these two men I'm talking about, it's not about your mother, your mother, your mother. Some of you, your exes have done you some wrongs. And some of you too, it's not your exes. Some of you too, it's not your exes. Some of you too, your parents have done you wrong. But we're about to reverse it. <laughs> few, few two days ago, I was talking to a young man. I called a young man, said, young man, you are great. But since you got married, everything has fallen down. I said, it's not your problem. You betrayed, you, you, who break it, gave you a coma. I said, what's the name? I said, again, it is a Matilda. I said, someone said, said, yeah, I know, I know that. That's why I'm struggling. I said, let me break it for you. Lift up your right hand. I think in the course of the week, I'll continue with this sermon. This is the only church that you, you see the Bible like a video. That's right. When I finished preaching, somebody met me out there and said, Prophet, when you are preaching, I don't want to go home. I, I, it's like I'm watching a movie. I said, that's the word of God. Many people don't know this about the word of God. So when they read the Bible, it is like a, a, a battle for them. But if you, the Bible becomes simple for you, you know the spiritual revelation behind it. We are about to pray. This is the first prayer. Anything from your mother's background. Jesus that is bad. My God. May you not repeat it. Amen. Say by power. By power. Whatever. Whatever. It's from my mother's background. It's from my mother's background. I will not repeat it. I will not repeat it. Any word. Any word. From my mother's side. From my mother's side. Any action. Any action. From my mother's side. From my mother's side. That is bad. That is bad. I reverse it. I reverse it. I divert it. I divert it. I change it. I change it. Now. now. Whatever is fighting me. Whatever is fighting me. If it's connected. If it's connected. From my mother's side. From my mother's side. I change it now. I change it now. Somebody change it now. Change it now. You shall not repeat it. You shall not repeat it. You will not repeat it. Never. Never. You will not repeat it. You will not. Don't get it. From my mother's side, I change it. I come against it. It will not work. It will not succeed. By authority, I change it. In the name of Jesus. Fire, fire, fire. By the power of God vested over my life. Jesus. If there has been any word from your maternal side, my God, if there has been any covenant, Jesus.
from my maternal side. I stand on the altar of God and I divert it now. Amen. This is your second prayer. Every blessing, every blessing from that family, Jesus, anything that is good, you are taking it by force. Amen. Say, I activate. I activate. Anything that is good. Anything that is good. From my mother's side. From my mother's side. From my mother. From my mother. From my mother's family. From my mother's family. Any blessing day. Any blessing day. I activate it. I activate it. I pick it up. I pick it up. I activate it. I activate it. I pick it up. I pick it up. Somebody receive the blessing day. Receive it. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. Activate. 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 Somebody activate. Activate. Activate it. Activate it. By authority. Activate it. In the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands on the altar. Mr. Kevin, check for murder, Pastor Fred has brought the oil. Stretch your hands on the altar. Listen to me. May God, by the word of God we have heard this morning, look at how God works. The same river now that we're killing babies, it is the same now that delivered Moses. That's right. The same thing that destroyed people, God will use to protect you. Amen. Pharaoh's daughter protected Moses, but the father was killing other children. So when Pharaoh's daughter took the baby home to the palace, when Pharaoh goes out to go and kill all the babies, when, she, he, when he comes back, he picks Moses and says, Little Moses, how are you? He's killing other Jewish boys, but he's taking care of another Jewish boy. Tell somebody, I am different. I am different. Killing other people, but protecting the same. It's an oxymoron. I declare right now. My God. I speak by power. Jesus. I speak over the element of the universe. My God. If they are working against anybody, Jesus. It shall work in your favor. Amen. I speak over the sun. Jesus. The moon. My God. The wind. Jesus. The water. My God. The fire. Jesus. May they work in your favor. Amen. I speak over the trees. Jesus. They shall work in your favor. Amen. When you read Isaiah, it says, and the trees will be clapping their hands for you. My God. I prophesy. My God. The trees will be clapping their hands for you. Amen. One day I'll give you the mystery behind that scripture in Isaiah, that the trees will be clapping their hands for you. Money is made from trees. If trees are clapping, money will be cut for oh, I, oh, I can't feel somebody. Give me, that, give me that scripture. Lift up your right hand. Stretch your hands on the altar. Right now, say by power, things will work for me. Say today, today, my mother, my mother, whatever you are, whether you are alive or you are dead, hear my voice. Hear my voice. Any good thing, any good thing from your side, from your side that you couldn't enjoy. That you couldn't enjoy. I receive it. I receive it. In abundance. In abundance. Say, my mother. My mother. Whatever tormented you. Whatever tormented you. It can never torment me. It can never torment me. Say, my mother. My mother. Any blessing. Any blessing. You spoke on me. You spoke on me. I receive it. I receive it. Say, my mother. My mother. Any word. Any word. You spoke against me. You spoke against me. I divert it. I divert it. Now I declare, people here, listen, this week I'll show you a lot of things. People here that your mothers died premature. I declare you not die premature. Amen. I showed you mothers who died before their sons became great. Rachel died before Joseph would become a prime minister. And mothers who buried their children 
Jesus' mother buried the child. Eve buried Abel. I speak. Jairus' mother buried Jairus' daughter until Jesus had to intervene. Lazarus' mother was burying Lazarus until Jesus appeared. Today I declare as Jesus, by God, by his name, let there be a change. Amen. Look at the scripture. You shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you. And all the trees will clap their hands for you. My God. Oh, look at you. I declare. Sit down for one minute. 